we've been happy to see more reporting being integrated into Google Ads. We recently just released a video about the new reporting features for responsive search ads. You can check out that video up above. But I want to talk about the channel performance report that's starting to show up in more of our accounts. It's still in beta and it is for your Performance Max campaigns. We already know that Performance Max takes most of the campaign types and combines them into one. Well, previously, we really didn't get any understanding of where the ad spend was going in between the different campaign types. Well, this new report changes that. We do get some visualization on where the ad spend is going, where the engagement is coming from, and then hopefully you can understand more where your conversions are coming from to see if Pmax is really working for you. Right now, I'm on the overview page in Google Ads. The easiest way to find this report is to expand the left-hand navigation, click on the drop-down for Insights and Reports. And there we see it's still in beta. So if it is in your account, here's where you would find the report. If you're not seeing the beta in your account yet, you may have to reach out to a Google rep. However, this is slowly rolling out to all accounts. For now, let me just go inside the report. For now, to give us a little bit more room, I'm going to close the navigation. And as I mentioned in the intro, this report is for Performance Max only. When I entered the account, it defaulted to all campaigns. Even if I choose by overall campaign type of Performance Max, it's not going to break it down by the entire campaign type. You still have to pick a specific campaign. So head back up. I'm just going to choose my campaign. Sorry, I have to blur it all out. This is an actual client account. And here we get some information. So yes, it might be easier just to hop into the specific campaign, then go into Insights and Reports and choose the channel performance. Doesn't matter. You're still going to end up at the same spot. All right, first, I want to focus on this message because we plan on leaving this video up on the YouTube channel for a long time. So at some point, this video is going to be outdated because the beta is no longer going to exist, this report will be available in every account. Once this report is available to everybody, we will only be able to go back to June 6, 2025 to review information. But as of right now, we can go back all the way to November 17th of 2024. It seems silly that they're going to get rid of the information, but that's just what's happening. And since we're past June of 2025, Google is recommending that we download the historical information from November 17th of 2024 to June 5th of 2025, if we ever feel like we need to go back and review the channel performance within that date range. Honestly, we're just keeping track of snapshots. It's not something that we're really gonna keep and constantly go back to, but it could be important to look at. Next, I wanna focus on this specific information because this may be different in every account. When we're reviewing conversion information within this report, there's a few things you have to keep in mind. And it all goes back to how you have your goals set up within the account. If you don't remember where you can look at that, we have goals. Click on conversions, and then you'd want to look at your goal summary. But as you're editing each goal, or as you're creating new goals, if you're new to Google Ads, one of the settings is your conversion window. So if you're keeping your click-based conversion windows to, let's say, a 30-day window, and then let's say you have your date range to look at the past 30 days, comparing to the 30 days before that, your comparisons could be pretty off because you're comparing a window that most likely hasn't tracked all the conversions yet to a different 30-day window, which has. So this is actually a pretty good warning by Google. Also, think about your attribution settings. Google's gonna track conversions depending on how your audience interacts with your ads. The conversions could be tracked differently if you have last click versus data-driven attribution. Add that on top of your conversion window settings. Not all of your conversion information may be in this report during the time range that you're looking at. So yes, this report is helpful, but it's not perfect just the way that conversions are tracked. Okay, now moving on to the main report. First, we see overall performance summary, and it's gonna look at the date range that I have in mind, and it's looking at the date range that I currently have set up above, and here's just an overall snapshot. It's not breaking down any channel-specific metrics. However, this can be important to look at, so when you are looking at the channel segmentation, you can compare it to the campaign average. Is it on par, better, or worse than what the overall campaign is seeing? Now I'm going to jump down slightly because here's the helpful chart of where we can see the channel breakdowns. Google calls this section the channels to goals chart because we see everything funnels down to the goals that we're optimizing for within this campaign. So we get to see the overall breakdown here, but there are three drop downs at the top of this report. First, we have the channel breakdown. If I only wanted to look at a certain channel like YouTube, we can review those numbers. Going back up again, going to switch it to search. And then we see it's just really filtering per channel. No, I can't do two or three at a time. It's either all of them or you have to choose one. So in this case, even though it's not spending a ton, for this campaign, Display and Gmail, they're getting some interactions, some engagements. But this year, since I've started at the beginning of 2025, they haven't converted at all. Just to clarify, 
This is not a business that has a Google business profile set up. It's not a brick and mortar location. Can't visit the location. They don't want phone calls. So we're not running any sort of local presence, which is why you see Maps has nothing. But if you are running local ads, not local service ads, you're running local based ads using Performance Max. Yes, your ads can appear on Google Maps. If you're interested on in how to do that, we have a video about that right here, but you would see map engagements and hopefully results within this report. Now the next drop down is gonna be for ad format. Here's looking at all ads. If you wanna look at ads using video, and if you are e-commerce and you're adding product feeds to your Performance Max campaigns, there will be a third option for ads using product data. This is B2B lead gen, so not an option for us. So for example, if I use ads using video, there we see it change where when it's got the line strike throughs, those are ads not using video. So that's important to know if you're just looking at, well, I could just look at the YouTube channel. No, it's not one-to-one -one by any means. You can add video segments to a variety of different campaign types with Performance Max. Okay, let's go back to all ads. Because then the third dropdown we have would be results. Right now it defaults to results, and these are looking at all of our goals. And I mean all the goals that we have set up within the account. Now, if you've gone ahead and just selected campaign specific conversions, you can change it to conversions. And it says the conversions that this campaign has optimized for. We really just have one main conversion in this account. Again, not the best example, but just so you know, you can look between the two different types because there is a big difference. Now, when I was playing around with single channels before, you probably saw the channel distribution chart show up. I wish I could format it a little bit better. Or come on, Google, give us more space off to each side so I don't have to keep scrolling, but I can't shorten this column. Some of the stuff is locked, it's, it's weird. But while the visuals are great, personally, I like the table view versus the chart up top. I think it's easier for me to sort and it gives me more detailed information that I find just easier to download. And remember how I said we wanna download information before June 5th? Well, here's your download option up in the top right. But just like many of the main Google views, you can segment the information in a few different ways. Here's where you can pull in some of the channel to goal cart dropdowns that we looked at up above, or you can segment by certain conversion actions. I said earlier, this campaign is really just using the main conversion action, so really just show me the same numbers. As for columns, by default, we have impressions, clicks, interactions, conversions, conversion value, cost. There's the results. Again, in our account, it's gonna be the same as conversions. And there we see reports. I'm gonna to get to that one towards the end. If you click on columns, here's where you can go if you want to remove any of the column information. I say remove because it gives you everything right away. If I click on any of these drop downs, there aren't any more options. This is something I hope that they fix because being in B2B and lead gen, cost per conversion is a metric that we look at a lot. And I know I can export this stuff. I can do the math in my head, come up with pivot tables, whatever. It'd just be nice to have it done right away. Save me a little bit of time for now just gonna cancel this because there's nothing really more that we can add and look at. So if I wanna sort my report by the most spend, where is most of my performance max spend for this campaign going towards? Let's discover first, search second, YouTube, and then Gmail and Maps are barely getting anything. Now, right off the bat, someone might be concerned saying, well, YouTube is spending almost $500 and you got just one conversion and some change due to attribution. I understand that, but being familiar with this account, running standalone video campaigns for it, we see the benefits of engagement. We have YouTube view audiences added as observation audiences to all of our search campaigns. And we see a lot of users who viewed video audiences come back and search for our brand name and convert. So we're not too concerned about that. Search is right at about $100 cost per conversion, which if you remember the overall total towards the top, that's lower than the campaign average and Discover is at about $140, which I understand is higher than the campaign average, so search is doing better, but I'm okay with this for a couple of reasons. And I know these reasons aren't gonna be stuff that's gonna be just spelled out to you directly within this report, but I hope it shows you how important it is to really just not take this for what it's worth and truly understand why you need to know the ins and outs of everything going on in your account. So I'm okay with Discover being a little bit higher cost per conversion for this campaign because when we've tried to run just flat out display campaigns for this particular product, the display campaigns perform horribly. Not only high cost per conversions, but when it does convert, it's been spam showing up in the CRM. So when this Discover campaign is performing as low as a cost per conversion as it is, yes, 140 something dollars in this account is low. This is a huge high ticket item. We're good with that because we can see everything in the CRM from the specific campaign, for the most part, it's quality. Yeah, some spam comes in here and there, but we don't have any issues with it compared to what we did running that standalone display campaign. 
Now from the search standpoint, we're very happy with the $100 cost per conversion number because for the most part, these are looking like new search terms, new customers. We are using the newer campaign negative keyword feature for Performance Max and blocking out all the keywords that we're actually targeting in dedicated search campaigns. And in this particular account, dynamic search ads perform like a roller coaster. They can have really great months and really poor months. While we're still using both DSA and Performance Max to try to find new keywords, we're finding out for this particular campaign, not all of them, just this one, the search campaign feature in Performance Max is performing better. And since we've added those campaign level negatives, we've seen a lot better performance from both Performance Max and Search. So we're doing a lot better job using Performance Max for different search terms and keywords that we're not targeting with just Search. Now, one thing I told you I'd get to at the end of this video, because yes, it's pretty much the end. I'm all the way down. There's nothing else to show you. There are a few reports that you can look at. We're not running a ton of display, but you can click and look at the placement report just for this specific display campaign. Same thing for video, YouTube campaigns. I can look at the video placement report just for this specific Performance Max campaign. I'm not gonna click on each one, I'll click on one of them. Let's do search. I know the campaign's blurred out, all the search terms are blurred out, but I can review the search terms and look at things that have been added or excluded. If I feel certain search terms are coming through that I'd want to try to filter towards my dedicated search campaigns, Maybe I just want to block out more brand campaigns. I can review it and start adding certain negatives. Now, I know you can't see them, but these two are very similar search terms, just a slight difference, and they are pretty irrelevant. Bad job for me for not catching this one earlier, but that's over $260 from just two search terms in a relevant spend. Something I couldn't see as well earlier until we got better reporting, because these two search terms are relevant for other campaigns, but not for this one. So now I can just go ahead and add them as a negative keyword for the campaign, and I'll do it later after I'm done recording. Now what stinks about this is that I can't find any sort of back button to save my life. It's almost like I have to go back into the actual report and reset everything again. So hopefully that gets fixed too. But that is the initial channel performance report that's still in beta in Google Ads. If you don't have it yet, be on the lookout. It is rolling out to accounts. And hopefully Google continues to give us more transparency into where our performance max spend is going so we can better optimize it and use it to our fullest advantage. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.